to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Two scriptures. Second Chronicles chapter 7, we'll read verse 13 and 14 very popular scripture across the body of Christ. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. Verse 14. If my people. So this is an affair that has to do with God's people. He's not talking about the heathen. If my people understand the context now there are times he talks to people who are outside of the fold but this discussion has to do with his people and in case you are not sure I'm aware that they are called by my name it says but if they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways it says then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land notice it never said i will forgive their sins i will forgive their sin and i will heal their land the next scripture I'm about to give you, I pray that you archive it among your most treasured scriptures if you truly desire to experience God. Never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. Isaiah 57 and verse 15. Isaiah 57. Hmm. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity whose name is holy i dwell in the high and holy place that is my first location but my second location is that i also dwell with him that is of a contrite and a humble spirit why to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones look at this scripture i am high and lofty i dwell in my holy place but in case you cannot find me there there is a location that is within your reach find a person who is humble and i am there he tells you two locations where you can find him one the high and the holy place he said who shall ascend to the hill of the lord and who shall stand in his holy place and he says here that you will also find me with him who is of a contrite and a humble spirit and i am there for the singular purpose of reviving the spirit of that humble man and to revive the heart of the contrite ones Brokenness attempts to describe a state of realization, a state of acknowledgement of our limitations and inadequacies outside of the help of God. Brokenness is, is an attempt to come to a state of realization, a consciousness, and also a state of acknowledgement of our limitations and our inadequacies outside of the help of God. That means when an individual comes to a point in your life 
where you are aware and you are conscious of the fact that unassisted by the grace and the mercy and the help of God, there are heights you cannot attain to. There are levels of expectations from God that you cannot meet. It's called brokenness. And the Bible lets us know in Psalm 51 and verse 17, Psalm 51 and verse 17, that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. There is a kind of man that God cannot avoid. Are we together? That when God finds a man who is broken and contrite in heart and spirit, he does not have the ability to ignore such a one. This is a very powerful revelation. Because several people will tell you they are trying to find God. Several people will give you an impression as though God is far and he seems to hide his presence. It's like he enjoys the distance. And here the Bible is saying, that God has such, if I would use for want of word, an addiction. That there is a kind of man that if God sees, he cannot ignore. One who is broken, one who is contrite. More than one who is prayerful. We are coming there. More than one who fasts. More than one who is a church goer. More than one who studies the Bible. There is an ingredient God seeks for in man. And believe me, no matter what other spiritual activity you are involved with and involved in if brokenness is absence forget about intimacy with god it is the reason why you will find out very strangely that in the dealings of god with men he would pick the most unlikely because by every standard they may not seem to qualify or to match up but the moment he finds brokenness it is something I learned about God very early. That God cannot resist a broken and a contrite heart. Kneeling down does not mean you are broken. Crying does not mean you are broken. Brokenness is a consciousness. It's an awareness that translates into an acknowledgement. Brokenness starts with revelation. An awareness. Then it translates into an acknowledgement this is the reason why i love the psalmist so much we began our discourse yesterday night with the psalm of david the psalmist was one person who mastered the presence of god because he was indeed a man who was broken and contrite when you read the entire psalm 51 psalm 51 is a psalm of mercy it is, it is a capture of a man pouring his heart and his soul before his maker. You take the time to read the entire text of Psalm 51. And I tell you, if you are not broken at the end of it, you are not a Christian. Hallelujah. Psalm 51. Profound, unashamed declaration of a man's helplessness and his inadequacy in the face of God's power, holiness, grace, and beauty. No wonder God called him. God never called Abraham a man after his heart. Never called Moses who saw him face to face a man after his heart. This was a title that God carved and gave the psalmist as a gift for the depth and the extent of his brokenness. He called him a man after his heart. Are we learning this morning? A state of realization that translates into an acknowledgement of our limitations and inadequacies. Now, we live in a world where um, our confidence is largely hinged on our various levels and degrees of competencies. It is usually an embarrassing thing to discover that you are incapable in any area. It's not something the human would receive normally. Are we together now? Chances are excellent that if I cannot put on this mic, 
it would take me a lot of struggle to ask someone to assist me because the awareness of being inadequate is something that men do not easily want to admit it takes a long journey with god to come to a point where we realize that look there's no point wasting time i do not know my way around this that in in god's dealing with men he's aware of that tendency that men can rigmarole and gallivant around seasons of failure and would never come to a point where they simply acknowledge that god i am tired of this 40 years journey open my eyes and show me the way and god is loving but he's also disciplined enough to allow you until your brokenness calls him you would think that just because you are suffering god is touched with the feelings of your infirmity but he's bound himself with the rules of engagement he does not just engage erratically and emotionally if your brokenness and your hunger and your desperation do not call on him you will be shocked that you are in a season of obvious failure and yet you will never get the attention of god this is something about god that many believers do not understand so they get angry and say god you mean you are watching me like this this is what happened to cain in the bible cain would have simply asked what did abel do that i am not getting because it, it was clear that it was not com a communication gap god was hearing him god spoke to him and he was not even repentant he said am i my brother's keeper are you not god use your all-seeing eye to find where my brother went to god if you heard the voice of god would you answer that way you'll be on your knees saying thank you lord for speaking with me but here is a stubborn man to the point that god cursed him and he said hold on i know i'm cursed but you be careful with what you are saying if you curse me this way everyone who sees me will now kill me what does it profit you and god said you know what okay what what sort of a man is this another person who showed us the the danger of pride was the woman called vashti there is no record of vashti apologizing there is no record of vashti coming before king ahasuerus to say i realize my wrong there was no brokenness are we blessed a state of realization that translates into acknowledgement you see let me tell you this if we really want to experience the more of god we must learn early how to tremble before him to come before him in total openness and to not allow ourselves to suffer too long before we admit that we need his help are we together yeah believers would stretch their wisdom Believers will stretch their connections. Believers will stretch their skill. They will give all kinds of excuses and continue to go around several circles. On and you see, the thing about God is he will step out and he will patiently wait where you kept him. While hoping that you will realize that he means more to you than what you have thought him to be and where you have kept him. Finally, after many years or many seasons of trying and stretching ourselves we finally come to a point where we are forced to give up and now we say lord i think i need you and he says you think you are not yet there i need thee oh i need thee here's the part i love hold on every hour i need thee that's the part of the song that most blesses me it's not that you need him how long and how frequent i can need you and then dump you and hope that when i have any problem i will call you back but the writer was intelligent enough to admit his frequency every i need thee come bless me now my savior The power.
power of brokenness. You cannot imagine how easy your Christian experience would be when you remain a broken vessel before God, malleable and ever open that perpetually your life spells inadequacy outside of the mercy and the help of God. This is not self-condemnation. This is not looking down on yourself. Are we together? Look what happened to the prophet in Isaiah chapter 6. In the year King Uzziah died, the Bible says, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord, and he saw him high and lifted the train of his robe, filled the temple, Isaiah said, Woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. You would think God would say, Ah, that's too much humility. Why do you have to stretch that far? The Bible says, A life call. A seraph came with a life call and touched his lips and said, Your iniquity is taken away from you. And now he said, Who shall we send and who shall go for us? And he says, Send me. I told you, territorial revival is always a product. It is the one who is truly revived that can bring revival to a territory. The power of brokenness. My first charge to us, therefore, this morning is that there is no shame in realizing and acknowledging that you are incomplete outside of the assistance of God. You were designed that way. The intelligence of God was involved in the design of man. And he made sure there was a gap he left in man that only his size can fill. So no matter what you use to fill that void, eventually you will find out that anything that is not the size of God will not fit that space. The Bible says he has put eternity in the heart of man. So we try to cover the space of God with achievements. We try to cover the space of God with all kinds of things. And eventually you will find out that no matter what you try to use to replace him in your life, you will end up with the same conclusion. That you need him more than you ever realized. Are we together? Now he does not become for you... Um, a God that just comes into your life because you want to prosper, because you want a job. Now, that, that, when, when it has to do with the business of brokenness, you are not looking for things. You are looking for him. He has become your life. You're not just trying to say, oh, I've discovered that my, my, your presence in my life gives me a job, gives me children. Thank God for those things and you are right. But more than that, you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you for great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are everything There are many preachers who it would take them many years to realize that no matter how competent you are, you were designed to be inadequate outside of him. There are many businessmen it would take them. You see, let me tell you, there are certain languages when you hear, they are revealers that there is no brokenness in that vessel. My thing. My business. The moment we begin to credit achievements to ourselves immediately, it reveals that there is something about brokenness that has not been administered in us. When you truly become broken, you get to a realm called Galatians 2.20 that I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And that the life that I live in the flesh, I live only by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You no longer become ashamed to let the nations know that behind everything that you see that looks glorious, you see. 
and you will sing his praises with unashamedness when people try to shut you down and say you are falling your hand you tell them you you don't know where i'm coming from ah and i will not be silent i will always As long as I am breathing, I will This must be more than a special number in your life. The desire to see men that through your life, I, I would always say it this way, the more men look at you, if you are truly broken, they should not see you. Because when you look at a mirror, you don't see the mirror. Strangely, the more you look at the mirror, you see the object that the mirror is reflecting. So through your results and through everything that people see, they come to one conclusion. You are a testament of what God can do in and through a man galatians 1 25 24 and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me you can glorify god but your life can become a mirror that people sit and watch it like a movie and at the end of it, they say, God, we give you glory. This has to be you. Are we together? Let me tell you sincerely. It's not because believers do not pray. I'm not sure. I may be wrong. But I'm not sure there is a generation that prays like our time in the body of Christ. There are people who have fasted for years. The longest I've seen and witnessed in my life is 400 days. Non-stop, six to six. I wrapped up the last day with the person. This happened many years ago. And yet at the end of that fast, you would think that person, you should touch his hand and your hand should come out through his skin because of the level of spiritual emphasis. Because you see, these activities in themselves do not carry intrinsic power their power is derived from the sincerity of the state of your heart this is what people do not understand about spiritual activities that spiritual activities in themselves do not administer any power their power is derived from the state of the practitioner of those activities that means you can engage in a correct activity and yet, because of the corruption of the state of your heart, it does not give life to that activity. Are we together? Yes. What gives credence to the things that we do spiritually is the state of our heart. And in this respect, brokenness. Whilst you are seated, in one minute I'd like you to pray and just pour your heart before the God of heaven and tell him, Lord, I am tired of living my life as though you are not the authority over me. The unashamedness to admit that I need help. The unashamedness to admit that my business needs help. The unashamedness to admit that unassisted I cannot go far. I repent of it. Someone is praying. Lift your voice and pray. Perhaps there are parents struggling with children and rather than going to god who gave the children we resort to all kinds of things war to them who go down to egypt for help and make god a last resort after we've explored every other thing someone is praying let it be from the depth of your heart brokenness struggling in your job and yet you will never talk to God about it because you do not believe in his ability to help you we can go to men we can resort to systems and structures and formulas but would never come to the God of the universe 
the one who has mastered the art of helping men there must be that genuine repentance lord i have tried and tried and tried and tried i don't want this year to be like last year struggling and trying and giving all kinds of flimsy excuses no matter what it takes i need you i don't need your contribution i need all of you i'm not asking you to come and contribute into a template that i built for myself i repent and i bring out a clean slate whatever you write on it is what i will read my heart my mind my soul belongs to you you are praying it all belongs to you belongs to you Fight that pride once and for all this morning. Don't be ashamed. It belongs to you. Hmm. The songs we sing, they all belong to you. And even the air I breathe, it all belongs to you, belongs to you. Hey, it belongs to you. How in the world do you think you are going to raise 500 million naira in two months? Calculating economically is a waste of time. Don't let your pride kill you. You are already in financial trouble. Come to he who can open a door that no man can shut. I know you are a businessman. I know you have certifications. But except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. My Bible says the watchmen watch it but in vain. It is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. But he giveth his beloved sleep amazing how long it takes the human fighting god in pride before we get to a point where we say lord help me it's as simple as that help me thou son of david he said have mercy on me it's a language that many people have not learned lord you stay back i think i can manage my family the child is only stubborn i'm used to it I, i've been a counselor for 10 years and god says i respect you i gave you a will do not wait for situations to damage you and tear you too far before you call on him the bible says the lord is nigh them not them who need him them that call upon him we're getting into the prayer ministry shortly you will be learning that the highest proof of humility is prayer prayer is not just about spirituality is the highest demonstration of humility that every time you pray you are it is it is the most vocal way of acknowledging your limitation are we learning something this morning broken for some of us after this service you need to go back keep all those pieces of papers and all those accolades and say lord help me help me the way these businesses the way this and that is happening around my life the way my family is running 
I need you if you I love Moses if you do not go with us Moses said I'm not going anywhere I have mastered the pain that comes when you are not there I'm not going to make that mistake again if you will not go with us just be sure that this is where we are camping and God said you got it my presence will go with you and with that presence I will give you rest are we learning can I tell you results do not happen to the most competent necessarily results do not happen to the most deserving necessarily there are many people who it is they they have they know how to step back and just allow the master ride through their destinies and you will find out that you will see a man with five children all well behaved ask the children how the parenting happened you will see gaps in the principle of parenting you will know that many things that should make children well behaved that man did not do it and yet the one thing he acknowledged was that i am not the head of this home i am only the steward of this home and because of that state of brokenness god said okay if left for your ignorance you will produce armed robbers but because you have given me my space in this home let me take responsibility can i tell you this you allow god to take responsibility and pilot your destiny and then you sit back and marvel and wonder at the destination he will take you to is someone learning this morning yes let's break that pride Some of you need to go and lock your place of business and say there, there's, there's not been sales. Um, it's not just the issue of going on Google to say principles of sales. Drop that thing. I'm not, the person talking to you is not stupid. There are times you need to just drop it and say, Lord, you are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. If you do not open a door, that door cannot be opened. And God says, you are speaking my language. Now I'm listening to you. Are we together teach everyone around you this principle do not allow your pride to stretch you too far before you come to him be ever broken before him to be ever broken means to walk in this consciousness if it does not help me I cannot be helped if it does not lift me I cannot be lifted the door that he does not open I will weary myself in front of it but if he does open that door, he can open it in a way that no man can shut. Number two, the second principle that can help us experience personal revival is the ministry of prayer. The ministry of prayer. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Luke 18 and verse 1. There is a relationship between weariness or fainting and prayerlessness. Here's how Jesus put it. He spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So that if you are not praying, you will not be able to do anything about that situation of weariness. To faint there means exhaustion. It means he's saying that it is not unusual for the human to be exhausted. But there is something that prayer can do that can remedy that constraint. Hallelujah. Psalm 65 and verse 2. Very powerful scripture. Psalm 65 and verse 2. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come unto thee the one who can hear prayers shall all flesh come what is it about prayer that makes it powerful is it the speaking is it the timing i have studied the subject of prayer very thoroughly by the grace of god i've had the honor of meeting a few people who uh, I would say have, have 
have been given that grace for prayer and supplication and i've engaged with them to find out i have read books by men and women of prayer like em bounds charles g finney these are people who were purported the body of christ received them as gift even in the area of prayer i studied their materials very thoroughly in an attempt to what is it about prayer that makes it powerful is it the one praying is it the one being prayed to is it the time spent in prayer is it the attitude are we together is it what is said in the prayer it was an attempt to piece together the ingredients that really make prayer effectual because i learned from scripture that there is a condition in prayer called praying amiss now it's a very dangerous thing because it is praying but it is praying amiss and then apostle james was teaching us using this template called elijah that the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous is that true that it availed much amplified says it is it is dynamic in its working he says so i wanted to understand the whole subject of prayer because i want to live an efficient christian life and then i also wanted to know because you see i found out that there for a long time there had been an error in the body of christ the make believe that prayer is the one and only key required for the victory of the believer I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that is not true. There are people who the only emphasis as far as the growth and the development of the believer is concerned is prayer. And I have seen many believers who have prayed and I have seen the benefits of prayer in their life. And I've seen them compromise on the other principles and I've seen the deficiency of those principles in their lives. I will give you the keys of the kingdom not a key are we together so what is it about prayer what exactly is prayer at what point do they say a man is praying is it when you are talking or when you are silent praise god apologies for the sound at what point would you say that a man is praying? I hope you can still hear me. I'm sure they are working on it. So let me just have your attention. When do you know and when do you say that a man is praying? I think while they are working on it, okay, that's fine. I was going to ask us to pray so that we just allow them to do the work. But when, when do I know if I am talking, if you meet me talking, does that mean I'm praying? Hmm. Is it when I mention the name Jesus that I'm praying? We're not doing an extensive study on the subject of prayer. But you see, the only way you become efficient in prayer is when you are taught. You will never truly be able to pray efficiently until you are taught. The disciples came to Jesus and they said, teach us to pray like John taught his disciples. They were not prayerless people. They were inefficient in their prayers. They noticed that there was a way Jesus prayed and there were results that came from his prayer life. And that they also prayed, but it looked like their lives did not capture any result. And they said, teach us to pray. But for the purpose of our discussion this morning, we are looking at prayer with respect to experiencing personal revival. So, I have studied that prayer according to scripture achieves four main things in the life of the believer and i'll just want to bring it to our understanding and then we'll have some time to pray i believe there may be more 
But from my study of scripture, I have found out that the prayer ministry seeks to achieve four principal things in the life of the believer. Are you ready? Number one, the first assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is as a tool for transformation. Transformation. The first, and believe it or not, the highest assignment of prayer in a believer's life is for transformation. Popular scripture, Luke chapter 9, from verse 28 and 29. This is Jesus now. Luke chapter 9, 28 and 29. And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. So Jesus went to pray. Read verse 29 with me if you can see it projected. Ready? One to read. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. Believe me, prayer is able to help the believer evolve into higher and superior versions of yourself. That the weak you, the small you, the timid you, the flesh-driven you, the carnal you, can evolve into a superior version of yourself if you know how to pray. Show me a weak believer, timid. Show me a believer that is bankrupt of light. Your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit deadened. Subject that person to a constructive, methodical pathway of prayer. And you will a champion will be waiting for you at the other end. Many believers are weak because they do not pray. They do not pray with the understanding that prayer is meant for transformation. Why would Jesus pray as the word? Transformation. You know why people get saved in church, respectfully speaking? And after many years, you look at them, there's no growth, there's no transformation Preachers who keep laboring to teach truth and they keep shouting, Amen, receive it. And after many years, you sit down with them and speak and you are almost heartbroken as a preacher because it looks like you've been wasting your time. I tell you, for many of them, they've not subjected themselves methodically to the ministry of prayer. Are we together? No discernment, no sensitivity cannot receive spiritual things that veil after many years is still there you subject people through the ministry of prayer and leave them there and watch what happens you just watch what happens there is a transition that begins to happen to them their language begins to change not just the prayer language but their language, the construct of their understanding begins to change. Their confidence begins to increase. Let me tell you, find someone who is suffering from complex and inferiority. Among the many things you, you bring as a remedy, subject that person to seasons of prayer and watch what happens. Prayer, if and when done properly, is powerful. Are we learning? transformation when we pray we are transformed that light that is locked up within our spirits find expression it is true so if you find out that you've been stagnated at the same level spiritually you look at yourself and there is no growth january comes december comes january comes december comes prophecies come and nothing you don't feel that movement you can give yourself the discipline of prayer for a season. Prayer like eating, prayer like exercise does not happen. You don't see all the results in one day. It, the key is consistency. Consistency. You're not going to live carnally for 30 years and then pray for five minutes and expect it to cover up for all that time. You will need to be consistent. 
I would always encourage people. It's not a doctrine, but it's a formula I have found in my life. If you want to take your destiny serious, master the art of praying in the night. Believe me when I tell you this. You go and read your Bible and see what prayer in the night happened. At midnight, Paul and Silas, you see it. While the day was, before the day would break, Jesus would leave and go to pray. These are mysteries of the spirit. Chances are excellent that it would not be easy for you to pray effectively in the day. Your eyes alone would distract you. Are we together? Your phone is there ringing. Everyone is calling you. Children are disturbing you. You will not pray that way. Your, your entire being must be involved in prayer. If it does not touch you, it will not touch God. Some of us start praying and before you know it, a text comes in and you hold it and you're like, ah, okay, let me just quickly respond. And one hour you are there. Two hours you're there. And at the end of it, you, you just remember you were praying. You say in Jesus' name, on your way out. You didn't pray. In all honesty, you didn't pray. You can't get the same results with someone who came and gave his heart and he's all in prayer. Please stay after me in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to pray. Preachers, we must trust God for grace and subject our membership to intense moments and seasons of prayer. Not just prayer and fasting. Prayer that we create a way to supervise their growth. Especially leaders. When leaders in church don't pray, they will give the man of God headache. When leaders don't pray, they will be carnally minded. Simple decisions that should be, it should be unanimous if they were sensitive. Because they are walking in the flesh. There will always be carnal and mundane arguments. Don't trust people who don't pray. Don't trust what they tell you. Don't trust what you hear. They are speaking in the flesh. No matter how well-meaning. Before I trust you, let me see your prayer life. Are we learning? Number two. The second assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is as a tool for making requests i wrote here and obtaining promises there is an allowance in the prayer ministry for us to make requests and to obtain promises philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 and 7 addresses the issue of anxiety once and for all philippians 4 6 and 7 it says be careful the word there is anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god back to verse 6 please let your request be made known you see the bible is saying it here don't assume that god knows what you are what you are going through or what you desire he says, let your requests be made known unto God. And then he says, verse 7, that the God of peace shall, the, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall guard your heart and your minds. If we're dealing with the subject of prayer in a standard way, I will teach you something about the relationship between prayer and peace. There, are, there is the tripartite manifestation of the kingdom. Every time you see this tripartite manifestation, the kingdom has come. Righteousness, peace, and joy. The most, the most, um, the most, how do I put it now? The one that is easy to detect of all of them is peace. In fact, it is one of the ways that God speaks. Psalm 85 verse 8 tells you that he speaks peace. You can know that your prayer is answered, not because of the appearance of the result. I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people. Someone once asked me and said, Apostle, how long do you pray? I said, that's not a very wise question. It's a sincere question, but it's not a wise one. Never in the Bible is timing of prayer given as the basis for effective prayer no no when jesus spoke about watching for one hour it was just a reference there is never a doctrine 
you do not pray based on timing you pray based on contact and you pray based on result you pray until peace comes if it takes 10 hours stretch that far of course naturally speaking if you discipline yourself to prayer you will invest and commit time but to use an alarm clock and just pray for five hours or two hours or one hour and then stop it you are being carnal that's the reason why that prayer does not profit people In true fellowship, timing is usually not an issue. Imagine that someone comes to you, he's, he's not being official, maybe a husband and a wife, and he's talking and the man is checking his watch and he says, okay, 10 minutes, may God bless you. And she says, so what were we doing? He said, fellowship. That's not fellowship. That's discussion. That's formal, whatever, office duty, that's fine. So we come to God and there are times that God would just want his presence to rest upon you. Do you know, there are times that it would take you more than one hour saying thank you. Just thank you. And there are times that you go to pray where you will shockingly not be able to say anything, yet you are praying. There is a level of stillness that is prayer. God defines the menu for that, 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 that feast. He is the Lord of hosts. You don't just go with your preconceived idea. Point one, Father, thank you. You are the line of the tribe of Judah, the, the rose of um, Sharon, the lily of the valley. Now that is done. Father, I'm here again. I've told you this thing. I've been in Abuja. This house rent, 600,000, 1 million. What is it that you cannot give me? Is it that? And you are praying. This is you praying now. Hear yourself praying. I've not backslidden. I've been trusting. You don't think I don't have options. It's just because you are God. And oh, no, 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 no. And then we wrap up with thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you because I know you hear me. And heaven is watching. Angels are watching. Demons are also watching in shock. And say, what kind of ignorant people are these? Can I tell you this? If you must pray, your heart must be involved. But let me tell you sincerely. The Bible says that prayer can be used to obtain requests. Let me encourage you. Learn to pray and to take every matter of your life to God in prayer and expect him to respond. Expect him to respond. Expect him to respond. Lord, I thank you. There's this thing happening in my office. I thank you. But you see, in making requests, God does not answer you because you asked him. He answers you because he said he would do it. So if you cannot connect what you want to what God has said, it will not be answered. God only answers prayers because what you want is connected to what he has said he would do. The protocol of God's dealings with men is that he only does what he says. If God has not said it, whether to you or that which is written, there is no basis for him doing it. I want to rise. God, I want to rise. Sincere prayer, but that prayer will not be answered. You have to find what he has said about your rising. Lord, I want to rise. And you have said this. You see, God only does what he says he does not do what you want he does what you want that is connected to what he has said please learn this very simple principle is the reason why many believers do not obtain answers to prayers they ask but you see they do not ask properly he's bound to his word that he honors his word even above his name so when you approach the parliament of heaven there must be intelligence to your prayer. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto breka te kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.